Welcome to Module 3 of Genomic Selection, and in this module we'll talk about why you may want to use Genomic Selection and what are some of its benefits relative to doing phenotypic selection. It's always nice to refresh ourselves looking at the efficiency of plant breeding, and you see there's a bunch of ways you can look at your efficiency, and it's important to think about how will Genomic Selection possibly improve your efficiency in any one of these areas. Here are some of the possible advantages of genomic selection versus phenotypic selection. One of the largest advantages is it can reduce the duration of a breeding cycle, and that can increase your gains, your genetic gains per season. It can reduce your cost of evaluating individuals, and therefore increase your, your efficiency relative to dollars spent. It can act effectively increase the size of the, your breeding program by allowing you to evaluate more individuals based solely on genotype than you can possibly do by phenotyping. It can increase the precision of estimates of genetic values. You get more results from your phenotyping, more value from your phenotyping resources. And it can facilitate connecting data between different lines, different populations, different breeding programs, different trials, etc. That's a very powerful tool for combining data and getting more insights into your breeding program. So let's start looking at what is the accuracy and relative efficiency of genomic selection. Many studies on genomic selection always publish the accuracy and or the relative efficiency of genomic selection, so let's see what those are. The accuracy of genomic selection is simply the correlation between observed values of phenotypes of lines with, correlated with their predicted values or their GEBVs as we call them. The relative efficiency of genomic selection really looks at the gain you might get from using genomic selection versus the gain you might get from doing phenotypic selection. Now estimating the accuracy and the relative efficiency is really not a required step in actually doing genomic selection. But it's obviously very useful so you can see whether genomic selection might be effective based on the data from your training population. So it's a good way to see if this is something that's going to be beneficial to you or not before you start implementing it. So let's look at the accuracy of genomic selection. This is oftentimes obtained by a process called cross-validation. And in this process you start with lines from your training population shown in this this bar to the left and in this case I've taken that training population and cut it into 10 segments. What you do in cross-validation is you use 90 of those segments, 90 percent of your lines, to develop a genomic selection model running at all the phenotypic and genotypic data from these individuals through the model. That model is then used to predict the value of the other 10 percent. That's for these individuals, their values predicted from an independent set of lines. Now you repeat this. Take a different set of 90% to develop the model and use it to predict the values of a different 10%. And you keep doing this until you have obtained the predicted value of every individual in your training population. And then you just correlate those predicted values, those GEBVs, with the observed values. So here's what your data might look like. Here's six individuals from your training population. You have their observed phenotype in the first column, or the second column. And in the third column you have their predicted value that you obtained through the cross-validation process. You get the correlation of the uh, observed with the, with the predicted, and that is your accuracy of genomic selection. The relative efficiency is predicts what is going to be the uh, the gain from genomic selection relative to the gain you, you might have gotten from phenotypic selection. I won't go through how the, this equation is derived, but it's simply the accuracy of genomic selection divided by the square root of heritability of the phenotypes used in that model from the training population. So genomic selection is indirect selection. In indirect selection, you select on trait X in an effort to improve trait Y. So the relative efficiency of indirect selection on a per cycle basis is shown in this equation here. 
Here's your gain you get from indirect selection. In our case, that would be the gain you would get from genomic selection. And here's the gain you get from direct selection. Again, that's our gain we would get from phenotypic selection directly on that trait. And that uh, gain per cycle is shown uh, proportionate to here. Square roots of the heritability of the two traits. RG is the genetic correlation between those true uh, values for those two traits. And again, the relative efficiency per cycle is shown in this equation here, which is the same as what I showed in the previous slide. So let's just go through an example, see how that works out. So, so here's gain from a one cycle of phenotypic selection for yield is 200 kilograms per hectare. Heritability for yield is 0.7. We know that the accuracy of genomic selection is estimated to be 0.5. So now we can give the relative efficiency of genomic selection compared to phenotypic selection on a per cycle basis by simply plugging our values into that equation. Here's our relative our accuracy, heritability of yield, and we come up with a relative efficiency per cycle of 0.595. What that means is that one cycle of genomic selection would give you 59.5% of the gain you would get if you did one cycle of phenotypic selection. That means, uh, that means a cycle of genomic selection gives you less gain than a cycle of phenotypic selection. And this is almost always the case. One cycle of genomic selection is almost always inferior to one cycle of phenotypic selection. So let's look at some of the relative efficiencies of genomic selection from based on cross validations. And this is just looking at grain yield, a usually complex trait with generally low heritability. Grain yield in wheat, maize, and barley. And on average, the accuracy or relative efficiency of genomic selection is about uh, 0.5. Sometimes it's even above 0.7. In one case here, it's down to a low of 0.2. But on average, it's about 0.5. Suggesting that uh, one cycle of genomic selection would give you about half the gain you would get from one cycle of phenotypic selection for grain yield. Agronomic traits. Again, maize and barley and wheat. Average uh, accuracy there is about 0.65, relative efficiency. 0.65. Grain quality a little bit higher, 0.69. So for these traits, they tend to be a little more heritable. They tend to have a more higher accuracy of genomic selection, and therefore they look a little bit more favorable compared to phenotypic selection. But they still, one cycle of genomic selection is still predicted to be not as good as one cycle of phenotypic selection. So we will pick this up in the second half of module three.